As the first holes from their phase one drill program have begun being announced for the rare earths deemed as critical minerals by the U.S. and Canadian governments, I'm joined with Appia Rare Earths and Uranium Corp CEO Tom Drivis to speak about the exciting results his team is finding at their Ionic Clay project in Brazil. Tom, welcome. Thank you, Ben. And thank you for being here. Well, why don't we first begin with the exciting results from the first 17 of 147 holes at your PCH Ionic Clay project in Brazil. What are you finding early on in this phase one drill program? We're very excited with these results from the 17 uh, uh, first drill holes of 100 out of RC, uh, reverse circulation holes out of 147 drill holes. The, what we see is we knew there was mineralization there, but we, we just found out that the mineralization is very consistent, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very good grades, and the other, we knew because we there was some um, auger uh, holes done before drill holes, that they had indicated mineralization over uh, seven eight meters. Now with this uh, with the reverse circulation drilling, we we found out that the the we have doubled the the width or the depth of the of the uh, mineralization. So the average uh, is about thirteen meters, and the grades are. Uh, over 1,500 uh, uh, parts in, uh, per million uh, rare earths, which is uh, an excellent grades over the the average grade of uh, average um, width of the uh, uh, 13 meters, and within that there is a, a very good section which is uh, double the grades of that. So, uh, very very excited to see that, and it's also very excited to see over the 17 um, first holes which is very con the grades being very consistent and then mineralization is widespread so quite exciting yeah very and, and it's even more exciting that it's just the first 17 there's obviously uh, many more still to come so we're going to find out more about that in the near future but rare earth elements if we can just take a moment here uh, are garnering quite a bit of attention in the media recently i would argue much more than in recent past for those who may be new to your story, can you give a quick overview of this project and how it compares to other well-known international deposits, as you allude to in your news release? We're, we're excited because this is a, a, a rare earths in ionic clay, uh, which is basically easier to process, uh, a very environmental friendly, very low radioactivity. Uh, but more importantly is the, the grades are... are equal or better, uh, the first uh, from, from the 17 uh, drill holes that we've seen, equal or better to other known uh, uh, deposits. For example, in the same area, in the same province, there is a deposit that is, um, uh, is actually going to undergoing development right now. Their average grade is um, uh, uh, 1,300 uh, uh, or sorry, 1,200 um, parts per million. Uh, our average grade so far is uh, over uh, 1,500 parts per million. And uh, as I said, we, there's high grade within that. Um, there's a, another deposit in, in, a, in, um, in uh, ionic clay uh, deposit that is being developed in Africa right now. And their average grade is uh, 550 uh, uh, parts per million. So it, it is, it's, uh, it's very exciting uh, 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 to see this, this kind of results and over, over the entire uh, 17 holes. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear. And for those who may be newer to rare earths, you, you do need that higher parts per million uh, to make these uh, deposits economical. And right now, that's exactly what you guys are seeking to do. Now, you also have several properties in the Athabasca Basin in Saskatchewan uh, that are ongoing, uh, that you have ongoing exploration with as well. How do these projects differ from your ionic clays in Brazil? And can you provide an update on your work there as well? We we got another project in Saskatchewan, Northern Saskatchewan, the Alsis Lake project is a uh, high grade um, uh, rare earths in, in, Mon uh, in Monazite. It, this is a heart rock project. Um, it, it, uh, it, uh, it has um, both uh, 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 light rare earths, uh, 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 magnet rare earths, and 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 some heavies. Um, also in in Saskatchewan, we have four other uranium projects, and and um, but 
in terms of the the uh, the uh, PCH project, the project in Brazil, the Ionic Clay, we're quite excited because uh, it's uh, it's very easy to uh, the the rare earths occur within the top 10, uh, 20 meters is within clay, so they're leachable. Uh, they they're uh, they're it's the best it's the most environmental friendly uh, um, type of deposit that you can have in rare earths because uh, other deposits, like the ones we have in Saskatchewan, they have uh, 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 thorium and uranium. It's more radioactive. Where down there, there's no, the very little radioactivity. Uh, it's um, it, it is um, uh, it's in the right area. You know, within uh, uh, um, 30 kilometers from a mining town, um, uh, there's roads, there's power, there's electricity, and um, and contains more importantly contains both heavies and and light rare earths, mm -hmm. and and, um, uh, and 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 that's very important because the the heavies are are, are not um, the the not uh, it's very hard to find uh, heavies the deposits with uh, with uh, heavy rare earths like for example China doesn't have a lot of uh, heavy rare earths mm -hmm. and um, and this is our, all this. Uh, 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 magnet rich uh, uh, magnet rich rare earths or magnetic rare earths which is uh, neodymium chrysodymium usually that are used for electric vehicle for for um, for uh, uh, building um, uh, uh, electric uh, vehicle motors basically the the permanent magnets and um, the um, it, but also you need the heavies because you got to make those uh, those um, uh, 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 neodymium, praseodymium work within the within that uh, uh, you know the magnets. So uh, it's it it it's very exciting because Apia we have both uh, we have a high grade project in in in, uh, in Saskatchewan uh, that is uh, that is uh, 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 rich in in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in magnet rare earths yeah. and magnetic rare earths and um, and also in critical rare earths, basically. And also we have this uh, project in Brazil where it has both a heavies and, and light rare earths that are needed for the uh, electrification, the uh, the electric vehicles, and and uh, and uh, all the high tech in the industry is using basically um, uh, rare earths, and uh, as well as the um, the um, uh, aerospace or the uh, defense uh, industry. Yeah, and I'd like to focus on, on that for a second here as well, because I do find it interesting that you may be one of the only exploration companies that currently has the whole package of light and heavy rare earths that are needed to create the permanent magnets used in all uh, EVs, just like you were speaking there. The DOD just dropped $94 million to build a magnet processing facility, uh, which would be the first of its kind in the U.S., which showcases their seriousness to build out critical mineral supply chains at home. How is your company able to leverage uh, this potential, uh, this to potentially garner interest for government bodies and from financial institutions as well? The uh, China basically supplies eighty or ninety percent of the rare earths to the uh, to the world. Uh, so, the Western world, the U.S., uh, Europe, and 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 the rest of the world is looking for uh, some secure supplies of, of rare earths. And as you mentioned, they are uh, actively uh, uh, doing things. Uh, they're uh, trying to help uh, companies to advance their projects. Uh, we think that, uh, and, and we know that uh, uh, any project uh, that is basically uh, in North America or South America, uh, outside of China, uh, it will have the support of, uh, of the um, uh, DOD or, or other, uh, other government. To give you an example, in, in Saskatchewan, the Saskatchewan government has funded the Saskatchewan Research uh, Council, and they're building the first processing plant in North America, and, 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 um, which is very exciting because uh, it, on our ALSIS project in, in, in Saskatchewan, we don't have to build a processing plant. Uh, they will be processing monazite, and and we can supply them the the, the you know or process the, the monazite in in uh, there. So there's a lot of interest, and there's a lot of uh, uh, help from from uh, DoD and 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 uh, the Canadian government. I believe the Australian government, the 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 Europeans, 
to see uh, the critical materials, rare earths and, 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 um, uh, and other critical materials uh, uh, being developed. So we think we're going to get a lot of help. Yeah, and that's fantastic to hear as well. Well, lastly, it's, it's right in your name that your company is also focused on uranium, a very important and widely talked about critical mineral. What is the current state of your uranium exploration at your various properties in Saskatchewan and Ontario? Apia started as a, I started Apia as a uranium company. We have a, our first property was in Elio Lake, o, o, Ontario. Uh, it's, a, it's a large property. We have a large a uranium and rare earth resource there. We've got a, in between infer and indicated, we've got about 55 million pounds of uranium and about 180 million pounds of rare earths. This is in, in, in Elio Lake where all the infrastructure is in place. Uh, seven, eight mines had produced over 350 million pounds of uranium. The grades are uh, a bit uh, on the lower end, but with the uranium price going up, and, and uh, this is it's a valuable uh, uh, asset to have. It, we, we have a 43 on one um, a resource there. Um, in addition to that, um, um, we, uh, we've got four uranium properties in, 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 Saskat in northern Saskatchewan around the Atabasca Basin. We have done some work, and we're actually uh, 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 we're uh, we're going to start uh, continue with the exploration there. The 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 what we're looking for there is we're looking for high grade uranium near infrastructure and near surface. So that's our model basically for for the uh, project in in, Sask in Saskatchewan. Now I have to say that we um, in the last few years we've been concentrating more on the rare earth and and and. The, the market doesn't give us any credit on, on this uh, uranium properties, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, you know especially with this uranium uh, being uh, uh, in demand. And, and we're excited because API is, is on, on involved with ura in uranium and rare earths, what are both critical and both in, in high demand and, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, as of, of you know, uh, late, uh, you know, last few years, and we think that's going to continue. Yeah, I do believe so as well. Our governments are being very, very uh, specific and purposeful on wanting to push these critical minerals. Uh, well, Tom, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it very much. For anybody who wants to find out some more information about your company, you can see the website down there below. Thank you once again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Brendan, thank you so much, and, and um, I would like to uh, tell the uh, your audience that uh, we've got a lot more results coming from from the drilling uh, we've done both in in Saskatchewan and in in Brazil. So stay tuned.